Listed here are some of the major geometry considerations which can lead to failure. Sharp internal radii and holes cause the stress to be concentrated. Such features cannot always be avoided, but must be taken into consideration. Feathered edges are from machine cuts which leave a knife edge type feature. The sharpness of the edge itself is not the problem as much as the edge not being perfect. Any little notch will cause a high stress concentration. Examples of these will be shown next. Many failures occur due to loads bending a section. There's nothing wrong with bending loads, but pound per pound carrying load in tension is more efficient. Another class of failures is buckling. This occurs when a structure is loaded in compression and any bending deformation causes more bending moment. This can be seen by compressing a soda straw. It will collapse at loads well below the material capability. Containers with pressure on the outside can suffer the same problem. The thin plastic drink containers can be buckled by sucking on the opening. If observed in public doing either of these, just say, I'm an engineer. Any design which carries load and is attached to something else has a problem. Loads will be funneled down to the attachment before it's spread out over the body. Failures often occur at or very close to attachment point. Structural analysis during design need to give special attention to attachments and to the adjacent areas. The top example is a rotor. The inside diameter of the blade has a sharp edge. The radius to the disc adds stress concentration in addition to what is caused by nicks. This combination causes a stress hotspot shown in red at a finite element analysis. The bottom, e the bottom example is one side of a Jaws of Life tool which is used to spread openings in car wrecks to release the occupants. This failure occurred at a combination of a feathered edge and a stress concentration. The fix was a machine cut removing the combination, one of the few metal off solutions found. Materials which look just fine on paper may not work so well in practice. Aluminum, for example, can lose much of its strength at a fairly low temperature. Some steels which carry a steady stress over half the yield strength can exhibit stress corrosion failures. Stress corrosion failures are made worse due to having no warning and happening after a long period of time. An example will be shown. It seems that all failed parts find their way to a MET lab to have the hardness checked. They are looking for heat treatment errors along with other material problems. If a steel part has plating, there can be hydrogen embrittlement problems. This is a well-known effect and the if a steel part has plating, there can be hydrogen embrittlement problems. This is a well-known effect and a quality facility will avoid it. A brittle failure on a ductile part should be checked for this problem. Abusive manufacturing effects can happen on ground features. It's possible to burn a part. This is when the local temperature while grinding gets very high and then quickly drops, making very Abusive manufacturer effects can happen on ground features. It is possible to burn a part. This is when the local temperature while grinding get very high, then quickly drops, making very hard local spots. There are etches which will reveal this problem. This example is a clip for bolting lamp parts together. The atmosphere was corrosive, the stress over half yield, and the material susceptible to stress corrosion. The problem took some time to show up, after a lot of units were in use. Proper material selection during design is a way to avoid such problems. Sometimes the cause of a failure is obvious. Try, however, to reserve judgment for a bit. Take time to look for combination effects. Do not lock in on a cause and solution too early. If there's a meeting on the failure, someone will come up with an idea for more tests. There's nothing wrong with running tests, but it happens that people with opposing ideas will observe a test and step back and both say, I told you so. Designing a test to give a definitive answer is not easy. Also, calling for a test to be run can just be a way to end the meeting and get to lunch. When the cause is not found quickly, the old fallback is isolated incident, as if the physical laws got set aside for a moment. 
If another failure could cause injury or even high financial loss, be slow to write off the failure as an isolated incident. Something did go wrong. If you are blessed with experienced help, someone will likely step forward with a war story of how this has happened before and he was the one with the solution. What often happens, however, is that in a rush for a fix, many changes were made. A shotgun approach. Perhaps his contribution was the one to fix the old problem. Perhaps not. There will be a next weaker link out there. The classic example is a chain failure. Making link 5 stronger is not likely to be a total fix. There are no risk-free changes. If it's broken, change you must, but do not overlook the risk associated with making things different. What led up to this? You need data to find out what happened and how to fix it. It would be unusual for someone to try to lead you astray, but not all data is good. There will be things that are true and important, false and misleading, or either and irrelevant. Do not automatically believe everything you are told. Throw out data which does not match physical laws. What led up to this failure? How can it be fixed? What do we do to avoid such failures in the future? Failures are useful but often expensive learning experiences. Take advantage of them to become a better engineer. Thank you very much for listening today. Please visit www.ingeniumtech.com for more webcast presentations and to learn more about our company and the services we offer.